Plutus Sports Analytics is a company based on minimizing the uncertainty in sports betting to help you maximize your profit. Newfoundland's first sports analytics team provides daily predictions for all major league sports so you can win big. Whether you want to hit MLB picks out of the park or get a slam dunk on your NBA betting tickets, Plutus is a company of choice. Head to PlutusSportsAnalytics.com. That is P-L-U-T-U-S Sports analytics.com and use promo code JSP20 for 20% off their deadly service. And now let's get to the show. Welcome back, everybody, to the episode of the Jay Seamus Podcast. This is uh, episode number 173, dedicated to a man who on February 9th, 1971 became the first Negro League baseball player to be elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame, Mr. Satchel Page. And as always, thank you for listening and downloading another episode of the podcast. On today's episode, we talk a little bit about the Buccaneers and their win in Super Bowl 55. LeBron James has some choice words when he heard there would be an all-star game this year. In Major League Baseball, they're getting gimmicky once again. But first... When it comes to video games, sports fans, we love them. May it be Madden, may it be 2K, may it be Tony Hawk. But there's one video game that when you hear that it's going to come back, it brings on a different set of emotions. In NCAA football, excuse me, EA Sports, NCAA football is making a return. NCAA football 14 was the final time they made the EA Sports NCAA football college football game and abandoned his lawsuit about players not about players being featured in the game but not being paid when featured in the game that was what stopped the game from being produced and so many video game fans college football fans out there were very upset some of them believed Ed O'Banna you messed things up Some people believed, hey, make the game anyway and find a way to pay the players while the game is still being produced. No, can't do that legally, can't do it. So the game was no longer there. But recently, recently, and oh my my, when this was announced, when it was announced on the Twitter page of EA Sports that the game would be coming back, you would have thought, Twitter was going to break. You know how it is when LeBron James blocked, had that big, huge block, I believe it was against Andre Iguodala in the NBA Finals. So people said, oh man, LeBron's block, that broke Twitter. Or imagine Michael Jordan, NBA Finals, Game 6 during the 98 NBA Finals when he hit that shot over Byron Russell, push off or non-push off, whatever you want to call it. Michael Jordan hit that shot. Oh man, Twitter would have broke during that or when Kobe Bryant did whatever Kobe Bryant does when he's on the basketball court. Oh, I got one throwing, scoring 81 points against the Toronto Raptors. Twitter would have broke. But this is different. This is different. To me, there's plays on the court that are big or in the field that are big or baseball diamond that are big. But this game, hey y'all, this is a game changer. This is the one football game that football fans will drop Madden 4 in a heartbeat, pick it up, and keep on playing. Me, personally, I still own an Xbox 360 because I still play NCAA football religiously. I recently started a new dynasty on there with the University of Tennessee. My first game was against the Cal Golden Bears. Demolished them, beat them. Before y'all say anything, yes, the game was on Heisman. I'm not one to play in a dynasty if it's not demolished them destroyed them oh some of you that still have the game but didn't know that you can still do this you may like what i'm going to say next you can download the updated rosters that is correct so the previous year if you want to kill with alabama and devonta smith and Najee harris go ahead and do it this upcoming year if you want to get the new rosters i don't believe they're out yet but if somebody's already jumping the gun go ahead if you want to be clemson and dj ui ungalale go right ahead and do that too but thinking about the game when it last came out, we all know how ratings are. There's going to be players, ooh, am I a 98? Nah, baby, I'm a 99. Play hard on the field, they'll bump 
your rating. The last time NCAA Football 14 came out, I came across recently the highest rated players in the game. Some of these, you may say, ooh, I remember that guy. Some of them, ooh, I do not. Aaron Murray, Aaron Murray from Georgia, former quarterback. I was a 96 in that game. 96? I forgot how cold he was. Jake Matthews from Texas A&M, also a 96. Teddy Bridgewater, a 96. Braxton Miller. Now, this was back when Braxton Miller was a quarterback, not when he moved positions to become a wide receiver. Was also a 96 as well. These next players are all 97. Johnny Manziel of Texas A&M. DeAnthony Thomas of Oregon. He was cold, y'all. A.J. McCarron from Alabama. Marquise Lee from USC. C.J. Mosley from Alabama. And then the only 99 in that game, Jadavian Clowney, was a 99. <laughs> that boy was a dog. Now, the game is not expected to come back or come out for another two, two, three years. You know, legally... Name, image, and likeness that's supposed to go into effect in the fall of this year. So I thought the game could come out in July of 2022. But they're saying two to three years to get it to come out, to reproduce it, whatever. I don't want to wait that long. But I can still play NCAA Football 14 with updated rosters and be a o Okay, keep the graphics, make sure the graphics are better than Madden, that the gameplay is better than Madden, and people like myself and you probably as well will be happy, oh so happy, because EA Sports is coming back out with possibly the best game they've ever made. Let's go ahead and take a trip to Tampa, Florida, because the Buccaneers, yes, they won another ring, but I don't think anybody could have predicted the way that this game went. Going into this game, if you were to ask if there was one team that were to win Super Bowl 55 in a blowout, who would it be? Many people would have said the Chiefs. They got Patrick Mahomes. They got Travis Kelsey. They got Tyreek Hill. They got Andy Reid. They got Eric Enemy. They got all this stuff in their favor. So if there's one team that was going to win in a blowout, it would be the Chiefs. But one thing I think clouded so many people's minds is that when you're losing both of your starting tackles, your left and right tackle, and you're struggling to win the battle in the trenches, it's going to be very, very hard to blow anybody out. Yeah, the Chiefs, the Chiefs offense is amazing. But with what they had lost on the offensive line, whoo, it played right into the Buccaneers' hands. And that's why today the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are winners of Super Bowl 55. Man, 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 one thing I don't like at all, and I probably have said it here numerous times, your boy can't stand a blowout. I can't at all. I watch a game, generally early on in the game, you can tell who's going to win the matchup or the ball game. How can you tell? I don't know. It's just a sense I have. It's just a feeling. It, it could not even be a close. It could not even be a blowout when I say it. But for some reason, a lot, in a lot of games, you can tell one team just ain't got it that night. One team does, one team does not, and the team that does not, well, pack it up, put, get your suitcases ready, because y'all got to go back home, because this game's over with. Y'all got no shot of winning this one. And early on in Super Bowl 55, you think, oh, man, it's a close game. Patrick Mahomes... Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes. And that's all you're thinking about is Patrick Mahomes will not get blown out. Patrick Mahomes is a quarterback that at any given time, he can stir things up. He can start up a comeback and his offense is good enough. When healthy, hmm, they healthy where has to come out. When healthy to make a comeback. Why did I emphasize on the word healthy? Man, look. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, Ben Roethlisberger, Joe Montana, Steve Young, Terry Bradshaw. Let's go back a ways. Any quarterback out there, the guy that called the game, Tony Romo. Any quarterback out there. Now, I don't believe Romo's in the category of the others as far as the elite of the elite. But he is just, he was just there. He was there in Raymond James Stadium, which is why he's at the top of my mind. Any quarterback out there, you can talk about guys that are playing right now. If you ask them, 
Will you be able to blow a team out if you are losing both of your starting tackles, offensive tackles, left and right? Yeah, it's possible you can, but it's going to be very, very hard. One thing I know going into the game that I think clouded so many people's minds, mine included, because I came on the podcast and said some stuff, so I'm looking back at it and was like, Jay, you're smarter than that. What were you saying? What were you thinking? Left tackle, right tackle, JPP, Shaq Barrett. Both of the starting tackles are out. Shaq Barrett and JPP are healthy. Who has the upper hand? JPP and Shaq Barrett. Kind of easy, right? Kind of self-explanatory. When you're losing two of those guys and the other team has their two guys that are good, really good, yeah, the offense is down. And it didn't take very long at all. Even when the game was close, even when the Chiefs were the first to put points on the board via a field goal, you could see really quickly the Chiefs were in for a very, very, very long night. Patrick Mahomes was running for his life half of the time. I believe he was hurried 24, 25 times in the game. In the game! Think about how many times he got hit in the game. Yeah, getting hurried, you don't get hit every time you get hurried. But think about how many times he got hit. Also, want to keep going with this? Think about how many times his wide receivers could not get open. I mean, there was a lot of talk, a lot of talk about these skill positions for the Chiefs. The national media, maybe some local media, they fell into the trap of the day, the trend of the day, which I can't stand. Oh, putting so much emphasis on the skill positions that you forget how important the offensive linemen are. And also, number two, winning the battle in the trenches. Now, we don't break down games break down games here on this podcast, but you know this, and I know this, where if you lose a battle in the trenches, you're going to have a hard time winning any game on any level. Talk about high school, college, pro. Think about the national championship, Alabama versus Ohio State. Who won the battle in the trenches? Alabama. Alabama's O-line won against Ohio State's D-line. Alabama's D-line won against Ohio State's O-line. Yes, top-tier talent on both sides, but Alabama won the battle in the trenches, and ultimately, we see Nick Saban puts as another ring to its collection. Alabama adds another trophy to their trophy case. Don't fall into the trend of the day. Don't do that. It's really hard, man. We hear about it all the time. Oh, man. Wait, this offense is so gimmicky. They're going to find a way to get the ball to McCole Hardman when you least expect it. Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Damian Williams, Le'Veon Bell. Honestly, I don't think Le'Veon Bell touched the field. That was one thing that surprised me. Because I thought early on in the game, the running game started going for the Chiefs. In the second half, the running game started going, but they abandoned it. I thought at some point in the game, you would see Le'Veon Bell because I think his running style would have been perfect for what Tampa Bay was doing, where they were just rushing four, getting pressure with four most of the time. Now, they did blitz. I'm not going to say they didn't blitz, because there was there's numerous times. You, you remember a blitz from the corner, from the top of the screen. You remember numerous times where the LBs would, would come up, two would drop back, the third guy was there, he would go ahead and blitz. I mean, that stuff happened the entire game. But most of the time, it was a four-man a four man rush, two high safety look, a cover two look, or uh, two high with man underneath. That was what was primarily the plan for the Buccaneers. Don't let them be too deep. A single high safety look would have been atrocious for the plan of the Buccaneers defense. Todd Bowles did a phenomenal job. Byron Leftwich did a phenomenal job. Bruce Arias did a phenomenal job allowing those guys to control that side of the ball. And notice, to this point, I didn't say a word about Tom Brady. Now, many of you probably were thinking, Jay, what do you have to say about Tom? Is he the GOAT? Is he the best quarterback that you've ever seen in your life? Is he the best football player that's ever lived? I'm not going down that road. Other sports talk shows, other podcasts, sports podcasts will entertain that thought. That's not me. I don't want to go down that road right now. But honestly, Tom Brady 
played within himself. One thing I know about Tom Brady that I will say here on the podcast, it's amazing the connection to him and Rob Gronkowski still have. It's amazing that he trusts Antonio Brown in the way that he does. Because there are so many coaches, quarterbacks, coordinators, that would be highly upset if their general manager brought Antonio Brown in their organization because they're thinking, man, look, we're trying to win, not lose. Man, look, we're trying to cultivate a a culture of winning, not a, a culture of headaches and disaster and one that eats himself from the inside out. We don't want that man anywhere around us. No, no, 5,000 miles away. No, 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 forget that. Got to go further. 10,000 miles away, that's perfect. We don't want Antonio Brown within 10,000 miles of our facility. But he goes out of Tampa. Bruce Arians says, look, man, you got to play with us, be what we want to be, or leave. That's not word for word what he said, but that's what, the gist of the quote was, if you don't do what we need you to do, if you don't follow our game plan, you're not going to be successful. And you won't be here for very long. But Antonio Brown changed. He stayed focused. He didn't do the things that he had done previously. Now, maybe he was and doing them in a different way so nobody would get caught. I don't know what Antonio Brown does on a day-to-day basis. But what we saw, what we witnessed, Antonio Brown doing his job that's it it's that simple doing his job and by doing that he's able to get a ring and to lift that Lombardi as a Super Bowl champion yes you can say all you want about Tom Brady about about, about Rob Gronkowski Leonard Fournette was there Mike Evans was there Brait was there Godwin was there White JPP Shaq Barrett Antoine Winfield Jr. (laughs) <laughs> he left in the way that he ended this game in the way that so many people loved. And that meme is going to live on forever. Dropping that f- peace sign right in the face of Tyreek Hill. I can't knock him. I can't be upset. Tyreek Hill started it. And Antoine Winfield Jr., he finished it. So, the NBA has talked to the Players Association. And they have come to an agreement that there will be an all-star game this year. Many players were a little taken back, had mixed emotions, mixed feelings about originally hearing there won't be an all-star game and then coming out and hearing there will be one. As a person that loves the NBA, loves basketball, I'll say basketball, I love watching basketball games, it is a little odd, not going to lie to you, it is a little odd that they have come out and said, nope, no all-star game, and then ultimately there will be one. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that have gone on lately over the past year where people have made decisions and then that decision has been altered because things can go back to normal where they weren't normal at one point. Keep that in mind because one thing we know about players, NBA players especially, they have no problem letting you know about how they feel. May it be that they're happy, they'll tell the world. If they're disgruntled, they'll put it on IG. If they're a little uneasy about something, they have no problem sharing that in an interview via a podcast like this one or other shows out there that cover sports. LeBron James, the biggest star, biggest face in the NBA, is on track to play in his 17th NBA All-Star game. Let that 17. 17th NBA, 17th NBA All-Star Game. That is what LeBron is on the trajectory to play in this year. We all know he's going to get voted in. He's going to be getting the fan vote. And I won't say he's not. He is easily, if not the most popular player in the league right now. Well, LeBron had some choice words, some interesting words, about interesting thoughts about the All-Star Game being played this year. Here's a few things that LeBron had to say when the news came out that there would be an All-Star game being played in Atlanta, Georgia. Quote, I have zero energy and zero excitement about an All-Star game this year. I don't even understand why we're even having an All-Star game this year. Coming into this season, we were told that we were not having an All-Star game. Then they throw an All-Star game on us. It's pretty much kind of a slap in the face. We're still dealing with a pandemic. 
obviously this pandemic has nothing to do with it at this point end quote he had more words to say surrounding the decision by the nba to have an all-star game this year and lebron is not the only player that feels this way and i can't blame them i mean before the year you're trying to map out how your entire season is going to go Will there be an all-star game? Will there not be an all-star game? Oh, there will not be an all-star game. So these are the times I can see family. These are the times I can see friends. These are the times I get time to myself to relax and rest my body. Yeah, we're playing a lot of games, a lot of road games. So our travel is different. Um, the way we're able to take care of our bodies is different. So I have everything mapped out. And one thing some people don't like when things are mapped out and they have things planned out for that far in advance is when a curveball is thrown at them. But might I add, these guys are professionals. Well, they're supposed to be. These guys, these guys are adults. That is not up for debate. You got to just kind of go with the flow. And when things get, when curveballs get thrown at you, adjust and move on. Curveballs get thrown at us all of the time. May it be at work or may it be in life. Just got to go with the flow. When your job is making a change that involves you, Yes, sometimes you don't like them. Sometimes you're a little upset with them. But you got to go with it. Just go with it. Yes, you ultimately have a decision, LeBron James and other players. I'm only calling out, I'm only saying LeBron because he was a focal, focal point in the focus of the quotes that came across my desk. But I know Steph Curry and others weren't happy with it either. You don't have to play. It's your choice. You don't have to play in the All-Star game. Now, saying you're going to play in the All-Star game, but not really be there, be there physically, but that's it. That's on you. That's on you, how you play, you as a person, you as an athlete. That, that's on you. And I'm sure there are some players that are at the All-Star game every year. They would rather be at home. They're there mentally, but not, they're, they're there physically, but not mentally because being playing in the All-Star game is the last thing on their mind. Just happens to be at this time of what's going on with the ability we have to really say whatever we want on any platform for other people to see around the world that we will never see LeBron being the face of the league. That's why he gets all of the attention. Chris Paul, LeBron's boy, also the president of the Players Association, had to keep every person player in mind when him and his team decided to propose and have a chance to have an all-star game this year. Just like things that have gone on in our lives, sometimes things have been canceled, life changes, and things get rescheduled, and you actually have that event maybe a little bit sooner than, than you thought you would because it's A-OK -okay for that event to go on as it was originally scheduled. Now, the, the date and the event may be altered, but the event will go on. Having an all-star game this year, it's not the end of the world. And ultimately, if somebody does not want to play, even if they're voted in, they don't have to. You know what else doesn't have to happen? Major League Baseball changing things up. Last year, during the odd year, Major League Baseball, would there be a season? We don't know. Oh, the union put something out there. Oh, the players don't agree. Back and forth, back and forth. Negotiating seemed like it was never going to stop. Last season, seven inning double headers. If the game went into extra innings, there was a runner on second base to start each in each half inning. Odd. And then it was also the universal DH and an expanded playoff. Doesn't that seem a little odd to you? In a year where you know you don't need to have all these teams in, we don't need to have a participation trophy, we're going to hand out participation trophies in Major League Baseball by making the postseason? Nah, buddy. Nah, I ain't no reason to. These are grown men. These are adults. Make them fight, scratch, and claw to make the postseason. Well, this year, not all of those things are going to still be in play, but one of them, a gimmicky way, to play the baseball is still odd to me. In this upcoming season, spring training will start on time. The regular season and opening day will be on time as well. Two things that will not be a part of this year that were part of last year that are new and two th there are two things that will be a part of this year that were a part of last year. This year, there will not be 
a universal DH, and the postseason will not be expanded. Translation, no participation trophies. Two things that will be a part of this year, seven inning double headers and in extra innings if a game goes into extra innings at the top of each half inning, the inning will start with a runner on second base. Uh, no, buddy. No, no, no. No, sir, Bob. We ain't got to change things up. Baseball is just fine the way that it is. Major League Baseball might as well throw the idea out the window that they need a runner on second base to start extra innings. Huh, no. Youth level? Okay, cool. Maybe they want to do that and implement that down there to speed things up. This is Major League Baseball. No, 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 no. Y'all ain't got to do all that. These guys are professionals. Play the game like you have been playing it the first nine innings. NFL football, with the way that they have their overtime rules, I can't stand it. Oh, if you kick a field goal in the opening drive of overtime, it's different than if you score a touchdown. Are you crazy? What are we doing? What are we doing? First team to score wins. Or go to the way that college football in a lot of high school levels have it. Start on the 10, start on the 25, go on in. If you score, the other team has a chance to score. Back and forth, back and forth. One, it's more exciting. Two, it'll speed things up. Major League Baseball, I get it. I understand it. You want to try to see what the fans are going to say in a normal year as far as, ooh, do they like it? Ooh, do they not? Here's some advice from little old Jay. Scratch it. Throw it out the window. They don't need it. They don't need it at all. Forget it. Let's go ahead. Play the game the way the game was meant to be played from start to finish. Thank you so much for listening and enjoying another episode of the Jay Stevens Podcast. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can also send all of your emails to jstevenspond at gmail.com. Remember to always subscribe, rate, and review. It's a great way for people that are searching for a new podcast to listen to, to come across this one. Then remember to always get the word out about the podcast via word of mouth, the things that we enjoy in life. We are more willing and somewhat wired to tell other people about. So no matter if this was your first episode or if you have been listening since episode number one, be sure to let people know about the podcast. This has been episode 173 of the JSU's Podcast. I will see you next time.